So we're gonna look up how B changes. So when we draw this curve, we're drawing it on a two-dimensional surface. So do the, we're gonna look at the right-hand rule where you're, well, let me change the direction this goes so I don't have to twist my arm around too much. So I'll just think right about that point there. So my index finger is going velocity. My middle finger is going acceleration. So let's go ahead, draw the velocity right here. Now I'm gonna draw the unit velocity, so that'll be T. And then I'm gonna do unit acceleration, N. Now if this curve is on the table, as you move, T, is always, T and N are gonna always be in the plane of the table. So if we're driving on a perfectly flat racetrack, there's no up and down motion at all. So that means as you go around this turn, your hand sort of rotates counterclockwise as you're making the turn. Does your thumb change the way it's pointing? It does not change at all. So if we want to look at how B changes, B is a cross product, B is your thumb in this situation. B tells you how the curve leaves the plane that T and N are already creating. So if you think of T and N creating a plane, right here, B measures how much this curve lifts off the plane right here. <clears throat> so this idea only works right now if we have this entire curve is on a plane. And so the curve, this curve doesn't lift off the plane at all. But if we think of something, let's say like a spiral that's going upwards, which of course, any three-dimensional figure I can't really draw. So if I'll do my best to draw a spiral, it's going to kind of look like this right here. But now, if you try to think of the right-hand rule with your velocity and acceleration as your first two fingers, your thumb, as it kind of goes up, you now have to move your hand in a spiral motion. Your thumb sort of points a little inward, not directly straight up if your spiral is going upwards, but your thumb sort of points inwards a little bit. And so that is how B, ch B measures basically how, uh, or B changes how much your curve is lifting off of the plane that def is defined by N and T. So that's one way to think about B. And we can measure how this changes. And we're gonna measure how it changes in the normalized version. So that'll be dB over dS, where S is the unit, uh, or S is uh, how the distance changes. So it'll change as negative tau N And of course, B is T cross N. And this little tau is equal to negative dB over dS dot N. And the way we're going to compute it, we're going to take the determinant of this derivative matrix. Divided by, so remember determinant's a number, divided by the magnitude of V cross A squared. And of course this requires V cross A to not be the zero vector. So we're gonna use this in an example. So find a T and B 
and torsion tau for the curve R of T, three sine T, three cos T, comma, four T. So before we get started on this, let's do a really quick graph. Three sine T, three cos T, that's not, usually we're expecting three cos T, comma, three sine T. So these are reversed from normal coordinates. So we are gonna get a circle, but it's not gonna spin in the usual way right here. We're not graphing it out too particularly, so I'm not going to be super precise on graphing it. But the other thing that's gonna be happening is our Z coordinate's gonna be increasing. So this is gonna create a spiral. So I'll just draw a spiral right here. So let's go ahead and make these computations. I'm gonna write out the order again. Which I can't find in my notes. There we go. All right, so T. Oh, we're not going to do the AT and AN this time. All right, well, I don't have all the formulas written down in one spot. So go ahead and just start with this, and then get the N, the B, and then tau.
So any questions on T or T prime? Magnitude T prime, I'm doing some funky stuff on the last two lines, so I'll go over more carefully. But any questions on the previous computations? So on the bottom, <coughs> we're doing T cross N right here, so I just rewrote T and N. How did I get that one-fifth right there? So I factored out, I saw fifth, fifth, and fifth, so I factored out the fifth. What else did I do? So I traded places, I commuted, but we don't get to commute, we get to anti-commute. My motivation for doing that is because I saw lots of negative signs everywhere. I'll make them all pink. So I just swap sides and then all negatives. Oh. Getting too fancy. So if I trade places, one of the vectors becomes negative. Or you can think of the whole thing gets multiplied by negative one. One of the vectors becomes negative. I made both of them negative, which was incorrect. So only one vector should become negative. So I'll keep the original signs on the vector with the four in it, and I'll make the other one change to be positive. All right, how do we do cross products? It's been a little while. IJKs with a magnitude, or not magnitude, a uh, determinant of the IJK matrix. I wanted to get as many numbers and negative signs out of here as possible before I set this up. That's why I took the one-fifth out and I basically took a negative out by commuting. So any questions on this cross product for B? All right, so now we have B. We're gonna find torsion. dot. So I'm just reading off the uh, R of T back on the original problem. So we've already taken this derivative. 3 sine T derivative is 3 cos T. So that's X dot Y dot's derivative of 3 cos T, which is negative 3 
sine t, and last up, derivative of 4t is 4. So this is x dot, y dot, z dot. What I'm going to do next is the second derivative row, which all I have to do is take the derivatives I see and then take the next derivative going down. So derivative of 3 cos t is negative 3 sine t. Derivative of negative 3 sine t is negative 3 cos t. Derivative of 4 is 0. And now we're ready for our third derivative. So we're just taking the derivative of the second row. So we have negative 3 cos t, positive 3 sine t, 0. What row or column should I expand across? Let's go to the rightmost column. You don't have to go. Uh, the only reason I go across row one with IJK matrix is because it separates IJs and Ks very nicely. Even if I have, uh, even if I had a second zero, I still would not go and expand here because all my Is and Js and Ks would be mixed around. I'd have to sort them all out at the end. So <clears throat> we are going to not expand on row one. We're going to expand on column three right here, just to save a little bit of time. Isn't that divide by the magnitude of velocity times acceleration squared? Yes, we better put the other part in here. Yeah, we need V cross A squared. I don't know if we computed A, but V we did compute. Actually, we can grab them right off. Yeah, basically the first row is V and the second row is acceleration. So I'm just going to grab those two rows and writing them as vectors. So we have 3 cos t, negative 3 sine t, 4 cross negative 3 sine t, negative 3 cos t, 0. And what we're doing is we're dividing by the magnitude of V cross A. So our velocity was the first derivative, the acceleration was the second derivative. So we're going to do the uh, determinant first. There's also a sine matrix hiding. All we need for the sine matrix is the plus minus plus column right there. So we're going on column three. So I have four times the determinant. So cross out the row the four comes from. And that determinant will be negative three sine t minus three cos t minus three cos t three sine t. There's a minus zero plus zero. That's the whole reason we did this. And then this whole thing is divided by the cross product. So we have 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 cos t sine t plus, well, that's not how we do a cross product. I was thinking dot product, but no. We are not doing a dot product there. All right, so the cross product, we're going to need an ijk matrix. getting relatively simple. It's going to be 4 times negative 9 sine squared t. We have minus, minus, and another negative, so it's going to be negative 9 cos squared t divided by so it's i times negative 3 sine t 4 
negative 3 cos t 0 minus j times the determinant Cos t four minus three sine t zero plus k times three cos t minus three sine t minus three sine t minus three cos t. All right, our numerator factor out a negative nine and we're left with sine squared plus cos squared. And it's going to be magnitude of that vector squared. So I forgot to put the square on the magnitude. So we're going to take magnitude squared. Still taking the magnitude squared. Or six squared or fifteen squared? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So I did a lot of simplifications here. Basically, all the ones I kind of skipped over was cos squared plus sine squared equals one. So that happened over and over and over again here. So a few places it happened that I kind of went through it really quickly. Right here, you add those two terms together, and you get twelve squared times one. So factor out your 12 squared, and what you're left with is 1. And I probably did that in a few other places, too. All right, so I don't think that reduces at all. So that's as good as it's going to get for torsion. All right, so that is the end of 13.5. So we're going to go into 13.6, we're gonna look at polar coordinates.